Welcome to Operation Vagabond Falcon Part 12. I'm driving to Mannheim to drop the front bench seat off and upholstery place to have the foam and everything redone. Now I'm back at Bruce's removing the rear gas tank as opposed to the front gas tank, right? These old gas tanks just dropped right into the trunk and a bunch of bolts hold them in, that's it. This gas tank was unpainted, so there is a little bit of surface rust I need to take off. And man, I go through a lot of brake clean at Bruce's shop. It's good stuff though. The thing about brake clean is that it dries with no residue. That's why everybody uses it. And before you paint something, it's good to spray it down with brake clean because that strips off any oils, even oil that was in your fingertips. So you have a perfectly dry, clean surface on which to paint. Of course, self-etching primer first. And while that's dry, I removed the guide plates from the frame that were used to align the cross member. Don't need them anymore. Bruce now fully welds the cross member in place. Goes all the way around the edges. And now my primer is dry. So on goes black. Semi-gloss Ford black paint. Good enough. Bruce continues to weld all the way around and all the way around. Cross member is on now. A little bit more to go because now the spring perches go on. This is the upper part where the coilover will push through and be held in place. Those need to get welded on too. Bruce tack welds it on from the side and the other side and uses a digital, it's like a level, but better. It's got magnets on it. We're trying to get full on to 90 degrees there. And if not full on to 90 degrees, you can't really get to 90 degrees because you can't go 90 degrees to the ground. But what he wants to see is that both perches are within spec to each other. It's like 0.05 or something variance between the two is what you want. And he goes to the other side, checks it. Yep, it's good. Moving on to the sway bar brackets. These get welded on in front of the cross member that was welded on. I can't tell you how far in front they need to go because on the chance that this suspension kit is slightly different or if they make modifications to it over the years. So please check the instructions on how far in front of the cross member the sway bar bracket needs to go. We're running out of time today, so in goes the dry fuel tank. And after the shop, I drive up to see Justin Kramer because he has U-bolts for me. U-bolts to hold the rear axle on. The rear axle we're, we're using comes from a 1998 Explorer and the thickness is three and a quarter inches. If you get U-bolts for a Mustang GT, or some of the older Mustangs that were used the 302, they may only have a tube thickness of three and one eighth inches. If you're going to use a Ford Explorer, like a higher end Ford Explorer that has the nice posi traction in the back, uh, you're probably going to need U-bolts that are three and one quarter inches. They're a little thicker. Small dog. Oh, Corgi puppy, Corgi puppy. Oh, you're so tiny. Oh. Oh, you want the stick? You want the stick? Oh, yeah, you want the stick. Oh, you got the stick. Oh, you're a small dog. Anyway, U-bolts. Thank you so much, Justin. This made my day. Now it's the next day. These are panels that cover up the hole where the shock towers used to be. Four of the holes are going to line up. The rest of them you're going to have to drill through. No welding is needed here. They, this just bolts right in. Before we can weld the sway bar brackets on, a tiny notch needs to be ground out of the corner because where we're supposed to weld them, there's a little plate here on the side left over from previous stuff with the stock frame rails that we can't take out. So we need to grind a little notch in the side here so the sway bar brackets will fit. And they get welded in. Tack welded first, then full on welded later. That's good. Zap, more zap. And suddenly it's painted. Yeah, you don't want to watch me paint, but the paint here that we used is Duplicolor Ford Red, which is sort of close to the Monte Carlo Ford Color J Red that is inside the engine. I bought one can of that and it cost 25 bucks. So it depends how much you want to spend. You want to get it perfect. Probably since this is on the bottom of the car, it'll get faded a little bit. It's engine paint anyway. Good enough. The Next day. All of this filming welding at Bruce has nicked up the front of the GoPro pretty good. Little blitz of hot metal falling on that screen. So you can get replacement screens and put them in. Don't do what I do. I torque these nuts down too much. I started cracking the screen a little bit more. So now my GoPro cover is all covered with super glue. I'm going to have to get another whole nother cover. Anyway, these are the leaf spring plates for the rear end. Uh, I bought ones from a 1970 Mustang. Our 76 Mustang, or early 70s before Mustang 2. They're close, but again, we have wider U-bolts, so I need to grind out the holes a little bit so the U-bolts will fit through. 
because they're just that little bit wider. Now, this is the manual rack and pinion kit. It comes with polyurethane bushings. You need to coat them. You're also going to get a little uh, squeezy tube of grease for them, uh, clear grease. You're gonna have to grease, grease the inside and the outside. They go in. They also come with a black spacer that goes inside. It's really not a spacer. It's more of a sleeve. It has a butt end on one side and nothing on the other. The butt end is going to go on the side that goes up against the cross member. You're not going to need a spacer. In fact, it says it in the instructions. You don't need a spacer between this and the metal because the sleeve that goes through that black sleeve has little teeth on the end of it, and that's going to bite into the metal just fine. It's really a challenge getting them in here, though. I ended up just going to the vise and using a vise to press in that metal plastic sleeve that goes in. Quick run in the middle of the day to CJ Pony Parts to uh, pick up more stuff. Oh, I think this is a 1968 or 19... So, yeah, 1968 uh, Shelby GT500 original unrestored. <sighs> back at the shop. Now go in the upper and lower A arms. Super simple. You bolt them right in. Just a bolt goes through. It's great. Just remember to anti-seize that bolt as it goes through. Tighten it down. Make it kind of snug. As for the upper and lower joints on the upper and lower A arms, when you put the hub, which comes completely assembled, brakes, calipers, everything, it's all done. Brake disc is on there. You do nothing but bolt it right in. Torque settings. Upper 70 pounds, lower 90 pounds. Super easy, goes right in. As for the coilover, again, since it's adjust, these are adjustable coilovers, you just slide the coil over the shock. The only challenging bit is the adjustment knob on the top. You're going to need a star driver. It's not a hex nut, it's a star driver. Unscrew that, that pulls right out. It doesn't unscrew, it just lifts right off, and then the neck comes right off, and that's what slides up through the spring perch. Out of all the things to do, this was the easiest. I even forgot to film it in the beginning, so I didn't, oh, grab the camera and finish it at the end. You will have to, I had to do this, it may be a variance between different uh, runs of this cross member. I had to widen the little holes there in which the rack and pinion kit is going to go. This was a bit of a pain, because the bolt goes in toward the cross member and then you have to get your fingers up in that hole and ever so slowly start that nut onto the bolt and then you don't have a lot of working room so you have an open end wrench to kind of hold it in there you kind of it half holds it so be gentle with it when you're cranking it down there's no torque settings for this just make it snug and tight now you need to find out where's the center on the steering because there's no steering shaft on it and certainly no steering wheel it's hard to tell where the rack is in relation to itself so what you do is you turn the rack so the now oh, what are they called these big bolts that push the wheel around <laughs> until they retract all the way in and then you measure how far it is from the inside of the boot out you can really do it and yeah from the inside of the boot out and then write that down and then extend it all the other way until it moves out all the way and then measure that then and i'm going to read directly from the instructions the rack assembly needs to be centered to allow equal steering left and right on a bench turn the pinion out to lock one way measure from a convenient point i use the zip tie to the end of the tie rod this rack was 17 and three quarters mine wasn't that you can see my math down there mine was 15 inches or 15 and a quarter inches. Then turn the pinion to the opposite lock position and measure from the same point to the end of the same tie rod. When I did that, it was nine and three quarters inches. So you do the math, divide by two, and then add that number to the smallest measurement and turn the pinion back until you get that measurement and then your rack is centered. So 9.75 plus 2.75 is seven inches. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, it isn't. I just subtracted instead of added. 12 and a half inches. There we go. That's my center point. Now I can uh, screw on the tie rod ends. They went on pretty rough. I needed penetrating oil for them to slide on completely. A lot of turning there. But then they slide up into the hub. And look at that. I can put my D-shaft on and the rotors turn. And it's the next day. This day was a bit of a downer because the... Ford 8.8 .8 1998 Explorer rear, these spring perches aren't right. I mean, I should have saw this coming, right? Who'd have thunk a 1998 Explorer spring perches on the rear end don't line up with a car decades older? So this delayed things about a week. Instead of grinding off the old spring perches and moving them, we don't have time. 
I'm just going to order new spring perches and Bruce is going to weld them right where they need to be. So this rear end is going to have a set of spring perches that are going to be used and a, and a set that isn't going to be used. It's just how it goes. Next time on Operation Vagabond Falcon, I have no idea because I ran out of film. I didn't film it yet. Probably something to do with the steering and getting those spring perches in. Have a good week.